Good morning and welcome to the Brenda Perryman Show right here on TV 33, WHPR, Comcast 90 in Detroit and Oakland County, and all over the world courtesy of the World Wide Web at www.tv33whpr.com. And I have a delicious show for you today. One that the first one is so informative. We were celebrating an anniversary too. And we, the second one, I have jazz man Mr. Ralph Armstrong on. Also, I have an interview with a doctor about germs and children getting, getting or carrying germs, too. So first, I want to introduce you to my first guest, Katie Brisson. Good morning, Katie. Good morning. How are you? Great. Now, Katie, you're with the Community Foundation. Mm -hmm. Yes. Would you restate your position with your vice sure i'm yep so i'm vice president of program at the community foundation for southeast michigan so we serve the whole seven county region make grants to nonprofits across the region for different topics so in my role i oversee any of the kind of competitive grant programs i work with the nonprofits who want to apply for grants okay and what kind of grants do the i mean different nonprofits who want to apply for grants, but like what are some of the kind of grant funding you've done? Yeah, so the way the Community Foundation is set up is we have many different funds that have been set up by individuals or businesses in the region um, for different topics. So the Detroit Auto <coughs> Dealers, for example, have a fund with us that benefits youth. And so I work with nonprofits in the youth space to apply for those funds. We have funds for environmental issues and funds for economic development. So it really, we really serve the whole nonprofit community. And we tell people just, just call us and talk to us, and we'll help shepherd you through our process. Yeah, a lot of people get afraid when it comes yeah. to big entities saying, yeah. "I need some money. I know I have a good project, but are there people that they can talk to?" Yes, yeah, so we encourage everyone to go to our website, read the guidelines first, and then if you think you might fit, give us a call, and we have a staff that will help you. Now, what is the website? It's www.cfsem.org, so for Community Foundation Southeast Michigan.org. Yeah. Right, right, right. Now, the HOPE Fund. Let's yes. talk about the HOPE Fund. Right, and that's what we want to talk about. Thank you for having, having me here today. One of the funds that the Community Foundation manages is celebrating its 20th anniversary. Um, and it, it is a fund, the HOPE Fund, that serves the gay and lesbian community, actually the LGBT community, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender community. Started in 1994, um, you know, before many people were even talking about right, this community. Right, so right. it was a big, big step for us. And, and so we're, we're kind of excited to take a look back this year at where we've been. So it's been 20 years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, how do you how does the hope fund work so basically what happens is so t 20 years ago we had a group of community leaders that came together came to the community foundation board and said we're ready to help raise money to build a permanent endowment fund at the community foundation to serve the lgbt community so we raise money from people in the community that care about these issues where we have about a three million dollar fund and then through that we take some of that money every year and grant it out to nonprofits both nonprofits that are specifically for the LGBT community but also some mainstream organizations that want to better serve the community um, and so we over the 20 years we've granted out about 1.8 million dollars through about 300 uh, I'm sorry through about a, 130 <laughs> grants twist my numbers 130 grants in about 40 different organizations now what kind of areas do you help them in so um, kind of historically we've done a lot around LGBT youth there's higher rates of homelessness with LGBT youth, higher rates of suicide. Um, so we're, we're trying to help um, prevent that by doing anti-bullying initiatives, teacher That's, tolerance. Let's talk to yeah. bullying. Yeah. I mean, that is so intolerable to me. Anyone who's ever been bullied, and mm -hmm. I was bullied as a third grader. Yeah. Yes, I was. <laughs> I mean, seriously. And people bully you for different reasons, but I know they bully a lot of people in the LGBT mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, the, and, and right at a time where many of the LGBT youth are just coming out and recognizing this in themselves, so to be kind of beat down and not welcome can cause a lot of long-term problems. Right, uh, like yeah. suicide and other yep, things. Yep. But bullying, so you have that bullying initiative, mm -hmm. and what else? 
Um, so we've also worked um, on on education around adoption um, um, for LGBT couples to be able to adopt. Um, oh, okay. We've done work around um, health issues and educating doctors to the specific health needs of LGBT people. Um, there's higher rates, for example, of smoking, higher rates of obesity among LGBT people, again, c often because of the um, stress. The stress and not being able to be themselves. Yeah. So. Yeah, uh, when you say not being able to be themselves, you mean they haven't come out or they mm -hmm. haven't come out publicly. Right. They, but mm -hmm. they, they've come out in their own yep. community yes. a, a lot of times, but yep. not publicly. Right, yeah. And so these initiatives help these issues. And one of the recipients of some of the funding is right down the street from the studio, yes. the Ruth. Ellis Center, right? Yes, the Ruth Ellis Center is a great story uh, of what the Hope Fund has done. We helped them before they even got their nonprofit status in helping create the Ruth Ellis Center. Um, and then they were able to get some federal money early on to go do street outreach to find the kids who were on the streets, many of whom had been kicked out of their homes by their parents or other things. Um, and now they've really built themselves up as an organization. They, they offer um, beds for kids, they offer drop-in programs, and unfortunately the need is still great for their services. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and they're building an addition now. They're now building a health clinic. Um, they've, they've gutted out part of, the, part of their building and are, are working to build a health clinic there too. Well, do you give any workshops for people who maybe don't have an understanding of the LGBT community? Are there any workshops? People, a lot of people, don't understand what's going on mm -hmm. and their tolerance a lot of this has to do with tolerance too mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. i mean what how can people yeah. find out more information yeah about that's a that? great question um so so i think we the, what we do is we fund people who do that so for example we funded the michigan round table for diversity and inclusion oh, yeah. to do workshops in schools to reach kids but in recent years, we've done a lot with the LGBT seniors community. There's a lot of particular issues for seniors. So really? We've, we've Could been, you speak yep. to that? Yeah, so we funded some work, public workshops around that. Um, right, so LGBT seniors are more likely to be kind of isolated. They might not have much family that's supportive of them. Um, or even if they have long-term partners, um, obviously there's issues in that they can't access their partner's benefits. There's still issues if someone's, say, in the hospital, that their partner may not be allowed to visit them. I and think so, that that is yeah. just ludicrous. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. It's, 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 and it's just what, sad. It's, it's <laughs> usually sad. that an offshoot of the fact that the families don't want this partner to come in or what? Yeah, what it's, is it? well, it's both legal, legal rights, uh, and, and so that's so it's, and, and then um, families stepping in. Yeah, we've done a lot of work around educating the LGBT community about estate planning. People think, oh, I don't have much of an estate, I don't need to do that. But then if something happens to you, you know, does your house go to the brother who hasn't talked to you in 15 years? You know, have you built your partner into that estate plan so that assets can go to them? And, and that's really important. We also work on the estate plans to encourage people to include charity in their in their wills right, too. Right, so, yeah. right. And people, so we have about 45 people who have written even the Hope Fund into their estate plans too. Oh really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what, how are they going to celebrate this anniversary? Well, so um, we're, really we're celebrating by the, a lot of our committee members put up $10,000 to match gifts that come into the Hope really? Fund. <laughs> so really? we're, they're actually trying to take this moment to say there is still a need for this. Here we are 20 years later and the needs might have changed but there's a need for the work of the Hope Fund. And like I said, more work with seniors. We're doing more work with communities of color, um, have a lot of different issues. Um. Yes, yeah, so let's speak to that. We talked a little about that off camera mm -hmm. because there's an African-American group mm -hmm. who yes. has received some funding, mm -hmm. right? Yep, KIC, the organization is called KIC. They're located right on Burroughs Street. Um, and they've done a lot of great work um, building um, African-American leaders, um, LGBT leaders of color. They offer a lot of social events, um, but also educating the community. I mean, we've also funded work in the Arab American community has some particular needs too. Right, yeah. because culturally, that's where some of the issues come up because mm -hmm. of the cultural beliefs and 
the so-called stigmas attached mm -hmm. because like we were saying overseas maybe in some of the I won't say Arab or Chaldean communities people can get killed for that they can right. get killed, right? It's the law that, that they're killed in some countries if, if, if they're out. And so, so when you work with people who have immigrated from these countries, like we, we supported um, Al Jamea, which is the LGBT organization for the Arab American community locally, to start a women's group. And many of these women, they had to meet in people's homes because they were afraid to even meet anywhere publicly. You know, So it's, it's a different kind of grant making that we're doing with the Hope Fund and trying to be really current on the needs and issues. So, Wow, that's amazing. And what are some of the ones in the African American community? Are they more out about it or not? Or Right, so KIC has really, I think, changed that conversation in Detroit as they've built their organization. Um, I think there's a lot of um, issues between may maybe um, some faith-based uh, folks growing up in churches that maybe not have been, been as accepting and how do you how do you find that medium ground where even if someone isn't okay with the lgbt lifestyle you still don't want to see people homeless sick on the streets committing suicide and where can we find that common ground to support and love people i, I mean i think right. that's that's that conversation right yeah. right absolutely yeah. where can you find that common ground yeah that is so important i um what where do you see this organization five years from now? I mean, because you've accepted another leadership responsibility, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. haven't you? Mm -hmm. Well, well, I've, yeah. So I'm now vice president at the foundation, and so we're training new staff. We're always tra trying to educate our own staff on these issues, so pe as as other staff work on the Hope Fund too. Um, where do we see ourselves five years out? I mean, I think you know. It's going to be interesting times. Michigan is one of it is now becoming a minority state and not allowing same-sex marriage. While we do not get involved in political issues, I think whatever happens there has ramifications for the people, uh, for LGBT people in Michigan. You know, we're doing a lot of work around trying to encourage LGBT people to stay in Michigan because those laws aren't here and they are other places. I think we're losing talent to other states and um, companies don't want to open offices here because of it. So that's really? another issue we're dealing with. Yep. Really? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yes, there's been a lot of efforts around that from the business community um, to, to um, because right now in the state, if you're an LGBT person, BT person, you can be discriminated for that in the business community. But how do they know? I mean, well, you, there's no place to put that down on an application. Well, I haven't filled out an application <laughs> so long, so, so I don't know what's on it. So. Right, well, but I think this is the point that we want to build a community where people can be themselves. And so, yes. and so it, you want to work somewhere that you can be yourselves and not have to feel like, am I going to get caught for this? I know, <laughs> right? you so, know. I mean, anyway. that is. Yeah, so, so again, the Hope Fund doesn't get involved in the political, the right. it, we can't, we're not, we don't lobby or anything like that, but we are poised to help support that community, whatever happens in Michigan. So I think we're all kind of watching that work. Well, Michigan is transitioning in a lot of ways, and especially the Detroit area. Mm -hmm. You don't know what's going to happen there. I mean, a lot of things are happening, but there's a lot of stuff underneath that mm -hmm. I don't know when it'll be resolved. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things going on underneath. So I am. This has been just wonderful having you on and talking about about this. I, let me see if I have any more. Um, questions because it's such a milestone that before all of this came up 20 years ago yeah, yeah. you and, and all it, have been working yeah. started working and you've been with them I've been with it 16 years so. Wow. and if I may just tell one quick story about Please. when we when we started so remember the Community Foundation our, our board of trustees of the Community Foundation 50 member board very prominent people in the community so 50 years ago I mean, or I'm sorry, 20 years ago when the Hope Fund was started, 20 years ago it included people like Dennis Archer and William Clay Ford and folks like that. Um, and so when our president at the time went to that board to say, we want to do this, as you would imagine, there was silence in the room. You know, what are, what are they going to say? And, and that decision, and it was really an unlikely board member, Frank Stella stood up and said, I if remember. we're if we're gonna if we're gonna serve the community we need to serve the whole community and we need to do this 
and it ended up on the front page of the Detroit News the yeah, next day. Frank Stella <laughs> so, talks, yeah. and he w was a conservative Republican. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Very nice man, though. Yeah. yeah. Very nice man. So yeah. I'd like to thank you sure. so much. Sure. Thank you. This is wonderful. Yeah. And I will, I, I will be back in just a few minutes. We're going to get ready to show the interview with Dr. Carrie Peterson. And I think you should l look at it because it deals with germs and your children and so forth. We'll see you in a few.